In India, we say health is wealth. I find that funny. How can we justify health being wealth when India is amongst one of the world's worst countries when it comes to air pollution? People in New Delhi, our capital city, are seen wearing masks every day. No, not because of the coronavirus, because they can't breathe. I did some research, I was curious, and I found it shocking that transportation contributed to global warming by 14%, according to the eco guy. Do you know the carbon emissions of your vehicle? This is a stat that often gets overlooked. People don't pay attention to it while buying their cars. In fact, I doubt many people even understand the value that it carries. I have an example the Hyundai Verna. This car emits 163 grams of carbon dioxide for every kilometer. Doesn't sound like much. Let's say you've had it for five years, but 80,000 kilometers. Well, that mounts up to 13 tons of carbon dioxide that you've just emitted into the atmosphere. For reference, that's equivalent to two full-sized elephants. Being a car enthusiast, I'm always curious. I'm always looking at what's coming. What is the future of cars? And to be frank with you, it's electric. But when I tell people in India about electric cars, I often hear the same old thing. Electric cars aren't ready for India. India doesn't have the infrastructure for it. But I want to bust that myth. I want to bust this myth by answering three major questions. Do electric cars have the performance to that of a combustion car? Does India have the infrastructure to support electric cars? Are electric cars cost effective? Let's start with performance. Electric cars are already beating majority of combustion cars. I'll take an example, the Porsche Taycan. This is a four-door luxury saloon by Porsche, but it's electric. The Porsche Taycan will accelerate to 100 kilometers an hour quicker than a $2.5 million McLaren Speedtail. And it costs a fraction of the price. Electric cars have an advantage over combustion cars for having instant torque and not having to deal with power delay when you put your foot to the floor. Back when people used to use horses as their form of mobility and cars came along, people weren't ready to change. They were so used to horses. But it quickly became evident combustion cars were quicker and they were easier to maintain. And this is the same improvements we see being carried forward by electric cars today. Now let's move on to the next thing, infrastructure. Electric cars require to be charged. They don't use fuel stations. But I have a question. How did we get fuel stations in India in the first place? we rectified the necessity of it. We knew that we had to cope with the millions of cars on the road today, and we built that network to support and made that infrastructure of fuel stations so, the car, so we could meet the car's demands on the road. This is the same thing we need to carry over for electric cars. And change has already begun. Many apartment complexes have wall chargers installed, but we need to accelerate, pun intended. We need to accelerate and continue to build upon the infrastructure so we can have the foundations for electric cars and more people are motivated to move into electrification. That brings you on to the third point. Are electric cars cost effective? I won't forget two months ago when the internet broke in India. Petrol prices exceeded 100 rupees per liter. I talked to my dad about it as well. He told me that on average, we're spending 30,000 rupees a month just on fuel. And that's a diesel, mind you. Take a look at this graph. It shows us the main cost in the manufacturing process of an electric vehicle, the battery. According to Bloomberg NAF, 
It cost $1,160 per kilowatt hour back in 2010. Today, that's down to sub $200. And it's only going to decrease from here. I have two examples. The Mercedes-Benz EQC and its combustion counterpart, the GLE. The Mercedes EQC is the electric car. It is more expensive than the Mercedes GLE. Now, let's take taxes into account. That Mercedes EQC is now cheaper than the Mercedes-Benz GLE. Many developed countries are pushing for laws so that more people move into electric vehicles, more people get exposed to electric vehicles so that we can change for the better good. Countries are offering significantly lower tax rates, like India with the EQC and the GLE. Some countries even pro offer flat out government grants to people buying electric cars. These are vital changes. Electric cars are the future, and we should make it the future by acting upon it today, sooner rather than later. Day in and day out, the air we breathe is harmful. It's unhealthy for us. It's killing us. Yet we're spending money on our combustion cars to run and maintain them just for it to backlash us and affect us. Companies in the private sector, governments, need to continue to build on this infrastructure of electric cars. And I urge everyone to move electric for us, for a community, for India, and for a better tomorrow. Thank you.